proceed to test sequence four. Over. Avro Tower 101 into test sequence four. Maximum climb at full throttle to 40,000 feet. Avro Tower, reduce throttle immediately, over. Mark point eight nine. Flight Lieutenant, cut throttle and pull out now. Mark point nine five. Mr. Woodman, do you read? This is Avro Tower, reduce throttle. And terminate dive now. I read you, okay, reducing throttle. Mark point nine seven. We've got a problem. Signs of structural failure controls non-functional. Initiating emergency procedures. Preparing to exit aircraft. 101, keep us advised. Number one, I advise your canopy bolts have failed to fire. 101, do you read? 101, can you respond? Hold up. Lieutenant Woodman, what the hell do you think you were doing up there? Just trying to survive a flight in that plane of yours. That plane was designed to go Mach 0.85. It's right in your pilot's manual. You can read, can't you? In close combat, there isn't a lot of time for checking the airspeed. You weren't in combat, Mr. Woodman. You were testing a Mark IV Avro prototype that meets all the operational requirements that the Royal Canadian Air Force asked for. Well, we should have asked for more. Kate, what will this mean for the program? Any comment? Nothing they'd let you print, June. Avro's new weapon of destruction. More like self You okay, Jim? Yeah. The CF-100 is a damn fine airplane. There's nothing wrong with your design. No, I know. We just have to get Buck Rogers as a pilot. Still, when all's said and done, it's not the most exciting plane in the world, is it? Kid, how are they hanging? Oh, not too good, Ruby. <laughs> Heard the news. Prototype dug a trench, eh? Yeah. The bad news is, the pilot got out alive. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll straighten it out, Kate. Yeah. The CF-100's not such a bad old crate. Thanks, Jill. <laughs> you remember in 42, the nightmare we had putting together that first length bomber? Mm, that thing was so big, we never thought we'd build anything that huge. Yeah. Old Sir Roy Dobson brought in that team of British engineers to inspect the first one. 
We all hoped they'd get their asses torpedoed on the crossing. <laughs> uh, remember that? He went over every inch of that thing. He was poking his cane into one thing after another. We were all quaking in our boots. I mean, he was the designer after all. And finally, he finishes the inspection, and he looks at his engineers, and he says, about our Lancaster. Now, that gentleman is, is the way, way to, to build, build a bloody aircraft. <laughs> sure could use another day like that. Uh, night. Burn. Night. I'm sorry I'm late. I got all caught up doing a crash report. The boys are asleep. The phone's been ringing all night. It woke the baby twice. Well, I'll look in on them. Thank you very much, Mrs. Oh, good night, Mrs. O'Hara. Production. Maybe we'll take a nice long vacation together, okay? We'll go to Miami Beach, all of us. Daddy, too? No, honey, not Daddy, too. Sorry about your bad day. Today I figured out that I spent the last four years building a board. We're preparing this film for Cabinet. This is a Tupelo bear from the Tishino Air Show. Built for bombing runs across the Pacific. Yes, sir, but we can handle that. Yes. But this is something you haven't seen. The Aleutian IL-22 bomber. A whole new generation of Soviet jet bombers about to be constructed with speed and altitude and range far beyond what we imagined. And they're going to build thousands of them. And they won't be coming across the Pacific. These bombers will be able to fly over the polar ice cap right in our back door and drop a nuclear payload on any North American city they choose. We're going to have to defend nearly two million square miles of Arctic. We need a new interceptor. Correct. Here are the operational requirements the committee has compiled. We need to find a company to design and build her. I want you to go to Boeing, North American, Hawker Sidley. Five to one weight to thrust ratio? 2G turn at Mach 1.5 at 50,000 feet with zero loss of speed or altitude. The thrust of a rocket, a weapons bay bigger than a B-29, and the handling of a two-seater Cessna, and they think this is possible? It's what we need. So this is gonna be one hell of an aircraft. Welcome to this edition of your national television news feature program, CBC News Magazine. In tonight's story, we look at the American civil defense program and its response to the threat of a Soviet nuclear attack. Is Canada ready? We must learn to live in a world where we have the hydrogen bomb, and the enemy of freedom has the hydrogen bomb. If the communist bloc does attack, our radar sites and observers will sound the alert. Giant bombers will take to the air. Jet fighters will scream aloft. Fighters will account for some of the enemy, but some will get through to your home.
What are we going to do about Avro, CD? Production shut down again on the CF-100. I've done it already. I fired Avro's president today. You fired him? I can devote all his time to his golf game. I have big plans for Avro, big changes. You'll see the CF-100 program sorted out. They'll be in full production again in no time. Well, I'm relieved to hear it. But I have a favor to ask. What's that? It's about this new fighter interceptor of yours. I want you to consider Avro aircraft. Well, they've hardly proven themselves on the 100 CD. This new aircraft will be highly advanced. From what I hear, aircraft companies haven't been exactly lining up at your door to build it. In fact, I hear the Brits and the Americans say the specs are unrealistic. The Brits just want to sell us their little Hunter F-1. Said we could stick a maple leaf on it if we wanted to. It's one-third our range requirement. Single engine, no navigator. It's totally unfit for Arctic patrol. And the Americans tried to sell us the F-102, and it's barely supersonic. You know, Wilf, this country does best with a big project. The Hudson's Bay Company, the Canadian Pacific Railway. It's why we're building the Seaway. Ships from every country sailing into the very heart of this continent. Canadian wheat sailing out. It's why we're building the oil pipeline. It's why I set up Trans-Canada Airlines. And that's why I got Avro started. All I'm asking is give Avro a little time to make a presentation, hear them out. You said that, uh... There were big changes for Avro. How are you going to turn them around? I'm going to give them one of my boys. Chief Engineer Floyd, excellent organizational man with a devoted team. The designer, Chamberlain, erratic. Contact in Manchester used the word brilliant. Welcome to Avro, sir. I am Prince Mike. How do you feel? This is my personal secretary, Claire Connor. Good morning, I'm Crawford Gordon. Nice Good to morning. meet you. Hello, I'm Crawford Gordon. Good to see you. Good morning. morning. Good to see you. Who is that? Crawford Gordon. CD House Boy Wonder in the war. Ran the whole munitions production. Good morning, gentlemen. Madam, I'm Crawford Gordon. Please sit down. Mr. Gordon, I've assigned Chief Engineer Floyd here to make a report on the crash. James? Oh, well, we'll have a full report on your desk by the end of the week, sir, but uh, we think the basic cause of this crash... Thank you, James. I'm confident that the problems with the CF-100 will be solved and we'll be back into full production very soon. Oh, thank you. And this company, Avro, has the capability, the brains, the tools to accomplish anything we set our minds to. You've shown it in the past. You built the Anson. The Lancaster bomber. The jetliner. First passenger jet in North America by several years, designed and built right here. There's no lack of ability in this company. What you need is leadership. That's where I come in. But today I want to talk about the future of this company. With the advances in metallurgy, electronics, hydraulics, we're on the threshold of a whole new era in aircraft design where almost anything is possible. I see a future that will take us farther than anyone has imagined, speed and altitude, into the stratosphere, maybe even to the very edge of space. And here is the first step. These are the operational requirements for a new aircraft which has been secretly tendered by the Royal Canadian Air Force. It's a highly specialized, high-performance fighter interceptor. Do you know where they've gone for bids? To the Americans, to the Brits. Well, I believe it's the destiny of Avro Canada to build this new aircraft right here. Beyond Mach 2, the Americans have to dive their receivers straight down to get past Mach 1. Battle operational from freezing to boiling. Oh, no existing metal could withstand this. How did the other manufacturers respond? They said it was impossible. I want to hear what you say. Well, uh, I'm sure it would be a very intriguing project, Mr. Gordon, but uh, the fact of the matter is that the speeds they're asking for would either melt or tear the wings and tear off any existing airframe design. So you're saying it's impossible? Well, um, technically, given the data and the materials presently available, yes, it's impossible. I see. Well, I'm disappointed. I guess I was wrong. Why, 
would he walk in like that with those crazy specs? I mean, we're a good team. We're ready to take on another project. But why not give us a plane we can build, not some crazy... <sighs> it is crazy, don't you think? You happy with the CF-100 solution? Pin joint under the boom with reinforcement plates? Yeah, then they can dive into Mach 1 if they want. Mm. Mm. Symphony season begins on Thursday. I was thinking I might take the kids, give them a shot of culture. You want to come? You know what this is? Yeah, it's a water chestnut. Oh, it's a perfect spacecraft. Of course, everything in space is the perfect spacecraft. Just imagine, zero drag. You're thinking about that new aircraft. In space, the potential velocity is almost limitless. Almost limitless. But that's space. We're dealing with heavy atmosphere. We penetrate air, we create drag and turbulence, reduced velocity, back to square one. OK. Conventional aircraft have the nozzles. No problem there's good penetration. No problem. Where the problem lies is at the back. We have chaotic displacement of air by the tail, the rudder, the trailing edges, and so on. So it's the drag. It's the drag. The drag is our enemy. And it multiplies. It's supersonic. Drag limits velocity. And so what do we do? <laughs> well, how do we control it? How does it fly? I, I don't know. Who is it? It's me, Kate. It's a really simple thing, Kate. GM. It's a really simple it's thing. It's four o'clock in the morning. Like I was saying, the problem, the problem is, the problem with supersonic flight is the drag. It's always the drag, and that's created by the wings and the tail. We have to get rid of that. We have to get rid of the wings, and we have to get rid of the tail. No wings or tail. Yeah. Then there's no drag. Just get rid of them. Cut them off. That's a hell of an idea. Oh, Jim, please. Charlie's going to be up in two and a half hours. I don't have time for this. <laughs> Told you it was simple. Honestly, Kate, couldn't this have waited until Monday? Just come. Just come and have a look at this. What? You'll see. Are we crazy, or is this the perfect supersonic design? It's certainly different, I'll give you that. Well, you see, the wings and the tail become part of the fuselage. You know, this could well withstand double supersonic. Of course, the wings will have to be extremely thin and, of course, uh, extremely strong. Well, that means uh, lightweight alloys. At these speeds, we're going to need hundreds of pounds of pressure. We'll need powered hydraulics of some kind. What about the uh, the wing leading edges? I mean, how do we stop them from melting at Mach 2? Stick in an air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> air conditioner and leading edges. Why not? Hey, I was thinking about these specifications that the engines are replaceable in 30 minutes without hand tools. But... Oh, hello. Uh, this is James Floyd. Could I speak to Mr. Gordon, please? Oh, hello, Mr. Gordon. It's James Floyd. I'm terribly sorry to disturb you like this. Oh, oh, thank you. Well, you see, what happened is, is a gang of us uh, got together with some of the lads, and uh, we may have something on that RCAF proposal. Could we meet on Monday? Oh. Oh, no, 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 that's perfectly fine. Thank you. Well, he says we should go around there now. This way, please. Darling, your guests are here. Bring some more coffee, please, and tea. Lots of it. Morning. Morning. Well, sir. Oh, call me Crawford, James. Uh, yes, uh, Crawford. Right. Um, well, 
Uh, young Jim, uh, Jim Chamberlain, our aerodynamicist, he's come up with the basic idea for a triangular-shaped airframe, which we think would do the trick. And that'll fly, will it? Yes. How fast? Mark II. Uh, maybe more. And the engine? Oh, Rolls-Royce. Nothing but the best. They'll have the power that we need. We'll start with test models of the airframe. Uh, but you should be aware, uh, Crawford, that th this is going to be big. Don't worry about that. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I mean huge. I mean, there are thousands of parts and systems, mechanical, hydraulic, electronic, electrical, they don't even exist. I mean, this is going to make the CF-100 program look like a Meccano kit. <laughs> Good. You build this thing, James. I'll get the funding. Jim? Yes, sir? Call me Crawford. Tell me a little bit more about this new airplane. We'll need to forge our own hours. We'll need a new machine about new three times the size. For a computer from IBM, that would be like having 3,000 more engineers. I was thinking about the engines, replaceable in 30 minutes. We suspend them from rails. One comes off, the other just slides Rails, off. that's a damn good idea. Sort of. It's quite a lad, isn't he? A new president. Yeah, that's what I'm The jet age has meant rapid development and growth for Canada, and in particular for Aviro Canada Limited, which produces both the CF-100 and the Orenda jet engine. Thousands of new jobs have been created. Young engineers who used to head for the United States are now finding good opportunities in Canada. Under the dynamic leadership of President and General Manager Crawford Gordon Jr., Aviro Canada is looking to diversify into other areas of aircraft design and manufacture, including civilian passenger aircraft. The Avro jetliner is the first and only commercial jet transport built on this side of the Atlantic. Successful in every way, it first flew in 1950, just two weeks after the British Comet. But when the Korean War started, the whole jetliner program had to be set aside while Avro concentrated all its energy on the CF-100, the most versatile and certainly the most heavily armed fighter in the world. In designing and producing these two aircraft, Avro Canada has demonstrated its claim to a place among the world's leading aircraft and aero engine manufacturers. Now, gentlemen, we've gone over your ORs. They're pretty tough. But we feel confident Avro can build you an aircraft which will achieve everything you ask for. As we did with the CF-100. The CF-100 was over budget and a year behind schedule. We're building jet aircraft, Light Lieutenant, not toasters. I'm sure you could build a toaster. <clears throat> Jim. Yeah, well, uh, we needed um, a totally new design for twice supersonic speed, so uh, w what it is. Well, it's basically a wedge or a triangle. We got rid of the wings and the tail. No wings or tail? No. Not as we know them, no. Could you perhaps sketch us a simple version of this? Well, it's like a triangle or a wedge. What engines would power? A uh, Rolls-Royce RB-106. They should be production ready for next year. And flight control? We're looking into navigation by computer. Radio control from the ground? No, miniature, basic, onboard computers, one for each aircraft. I still can't visualize this aircraft. Well, the drawing's a very specific flight, Lieutenant. It's a triangular shape. A 30-ton triangle. With a central fuselage, a high paper. overhead wings to give easy access to the belly pods and the engines. But is it stable? We yes, we the think ground. the design is very We stable. haven't actually got rid of the wings and the tail. We've integrated them into an extremely efficient airframe. We're completely confident that it will achieve the performance you require. Look, it's like this. There. Like that. Would somebody get that, please? It's classified. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we might have a more uh, formal proposal? Uh, 
I don't know, sir. Boeing, Hawker, Sidley, Gloucesters, North American, they all think this plane is impossible. How can we expect the average? Listen, Jack. I like the idea of building our own aircraft. In the war, we built Hurricanes, Ansons, Lancasters. But when the Japanese were massing in the Aleutians, we couldn't get a plane for love and money. The Brits had them all. We patrolled our coast against enemy subs in cloth-wing biplanes. A lot of good men, friends of mine, never came back. I swore I'd never let that happen again. Yes, I do. This Wolf Curtis doesn't seem to be one to dilly-dally around. He'll give us a good chance to show what we can do. In any case, it was a very impressive demonstration. Floyd, Smy. Why was I not invited to the meeting? You Air Freight Boys want to keep all the glory for yourselves. You know perfectly well why, Edward. And Mr. Critchley, manager of the Arenda Engine Division. You have your hands full with the CF-100 program? We are using the Rolls-Royce RV-106. You've called for a minimum £20,000 thrust per engine, correct? Yes. Rolls may get £12,000 if they're lucky, 14000 tops. Their design will never do 20000 in a 46-inch hole. But I have a design that will. Marrying an untried engine to an untried aircraft, it's just not done. He's right, Crawford. We have enough on our plate as it is. Well, besides, the lads at Rolls have assured me of the £20,000 rating. And development's on time and budget. To start a new engine program now would be just too risky. It'd be too risky not to. How's your flight, CD? Adequate. What's your assessment of this Avro team? Well, they're an eager bunch, capable of anything if you push them a little. There's one young chap, Chamberlain, truly a brilliant mind. Have you seen it? <laughs> the Interceptor? It's quite impressive. Looks like something out of a comic book. You sure it'll, uh, it'll do the job? Well, that's what they tell me. Of course, the model tests will confirm all that. Once we get a model that achieves the performance required, Curtis will order it to production. We'll need 100 million to start. To start, 100 million? We need metals that don't exist. Electronics that haven't been invented yet. Hydraulics, pneumatics. We're building this aircraft from scratch, CD. It'll be the most advanced in the world. Cut the crap, Crawford. This isn't the war anymore, and there are limitations. I want a responsible budget you stick to this time. You hear me? Yes, please. its stability. All right, let's go over it all again. Oh. Supersonic air is compressed. Compressed air is unstable. Air, unstable air over flat surfaces and straight lines hitting the wing roots causes a shockwave effect and extreme turbulence. So, what we have to do is to find a way to guide the air over the fuselage away from the wing roots so as to reduce the shockwave effect. How do we modify? Where do we begin? Wait. Wait. Hey. Uh, Jim! What is it, Jim? Contouring. The fuselage. We, we, we pinch the... We pinch the fuselage just in front of the wings. Then the contouring will draw the air in and then force it out over the leading edge of the wings. Minimizing the shock wave. Yeah. OK. Watch this. Refreshing and aerodynamic.
Yes, uh, Mr. Woodman, just in time. Now, that's the rocket that we use to get the model up to speed, and then the onboard sensors tell us the degree of stability. It's really quite invaluable. All set to go? Yes, sir. Countdown commencing. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Five, five, point nine. Wing temperature one nine or zero degrees. One point two. One point four and stable. Come on, baby. Mach one point six. What was the last stable speed? Mach 1.6, sir. Today, U.S. Army officials confirmed the secret detonation of an H-bomb at Jacobson Army Base in Nevada. The mushroom-shaped cloud was visible by viewers as far as Madison, 20 miles away. Sources refute claims made by the Soviet Union that they are developing an H-bomb with twice okay, the Okay, kids, it's time for bed. In national news, the Progressive Conservative Party of Canada has elected a new leader, John George Diefenbaker. The small-town prairie lawyer has assumed the leadership of the official opposition. Mr. Diefenbaker has pledged to fight for benefits for farmers, fishermen, and the elderly, and to fight against the spending policies of the Saint Laurent government, particularly those of the man dubbed Minister of Everything, Mr. C.D. Howe. That prairie fool, he knows as much about running a country as a dog knows about his father. He stands up in the house, Demands that I explain every detail, justify every expenditure, every program, every bill we bring forth to sends into a debate. I think everybody knows he's a buffoon, C.D. Nevertheless, I must defend programs and expenditures. I put a hundred million defense dollars aside for the production of this plane. But I have many hands out, and I can't hold on to it much longer. I put you in charge of Avro because you get results. I hope I wasn't wrong. You're never wrong, C.D. We're making great progress here. We'll solve our problems. I don't want promises, Crawford. I want results. And I want them by the end of the month. Of course, boss. All right. What do we got? OK, we know that everything's fine up through Mark 1. We're just wasting our time here. Not gonna get more. 
feed out of it now, are you? It's useless. It was useless before. We have got to have a wind tunnel, damn it. A decent wind tunnel so we can see what's wrong. There isn't a wind tunnel in the country that'll do Mark II. Well, then build one or get one. We don't have time. I need a Mark II wind tunnel. Or we can forget the whole thing. Oh, now that's great. That's just great. Maybe I can help you. I could get you into Langley Air Force Base. Their test tunnel goes up to Mach 2. Y you could? Well, that'd be wonderful. Take it into the States? How soon could we go? We get on the phone. <sighs> Very well. Shall we proceed? Increase the velocity until I say, please. Mark one. Mark one point three. Uh, no, no, slowly. Please. Mark one point four. See this. Mach 1.5. Mach 1.6. Okay, let's all watch for it now. 1.7. Increase velocity to 1.9, please. One point nine. That is. The air is not going over and under the wing. It's traveling down the leading edge. There's no lift. The plane stops flying. Can you cut it to 1.8? 1.8. What's going on in here, Emmett? We've got the 100C model booked in here in five minutes. At ease. Who are these people? Avro Canada, sir. Major White okayed it. Flight Lieutenant Jack Woodman, Colonel. That's the prettiest little thing I ever saw. We've never gotten a model stable over uh, Mach 1.3. Gonna build it? We plan to. Where? England? No, sir. Up in Canada. Toronto? That is, if we can get her up to our requirement past Mach 2. Past Mach 2. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, keep me posted. Come down anytime. And if there's anything I can do to help out, let me know. Thank you, sir. I will. So, somehow we have to stop the air from going down the leading edge and force it up over the wing surface. That's easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs>
I must have left the lights on. I don't know why I don't carry those things. People are always saying, be prepared, but I suppose I've always trusted a fate or some passing Boy Scout. <laughs> How'd you get into engineering, anyway? Didn't want to nurse, didn't want to teach. Are you married, or...? No. Well, only to my airplanes, or so my ex-husband used to say. Once he decided I wasn't having an affair with James or Jim or anybody else. Jim's quite a character, isn't he? Oh, yes. So is he stable now, or...? What do you mean by that? I mean, how did you... Security check, standard procedure. He was under psychiatric care. That was two years ago. There was a lot of pressure from the CF-100 program on him, and he needed to rest, that's all. Okay, fine. Listen, Jim Chamberlain is the best damn airframe man that I've ever seen. And he is fine. at 2 o'clock this afternoon, and Good. it's pot roast tonight, but don't wait for me because I'm going to be really late. Okay, I have a big meeting. Hey, Kate. Hi, Joe. Today, we finished CF-100 number 300. So, uh, when do we start tooling up for the new interceptor? You'll be the first to know, Joe. Mom. Hey, George. Mom? Can I come to school and play? Oh, no, it's your big meet today, isn't it? I can't. I've got a great big meeting. I can't be there, but you're going to swim your best, OK? Be a good boy today, OK? Bye. How's the day shaping up for you, Fred? Well, June, we have perfect weather conditions. Now, you've had a lot of problems with these high-speed model tests. Uh, what's different about this one? Well, the difficulty with an aircraft this advanced is maintaining high-speed stability. But we're confident with this model, and the telemetering will confirm that we've licked this problem to Mach 2 and beyond. Assuming that, what's your next step? Well, we'll put the aircraft into production as soon as possible. We have to meet the tremendous urgency of this country's needs for defense. Thanks, Fred. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Track curves to her. Sexy little thing. She's definitely a lady. From what I hear, if it doesn't fly, it's the company that crashes. It's a nice day, Air Marshal. Is your model ready, spy? Yes, sir. And so's the contract. Commencing countdown. Five. Four, right. three, here we go. Two, one, ignition. Mach one six. Mach one. One point six. Mach two. Yes. Mach 
Self-supporting infrastructure. Honeycomb. Just honeycomb the whole damn way. No time for a prototype, so we'll use the Cook Craigie method. We'll go straight into production, and then we'll have hand tooling on the first aircraft. Look! <laughs> Chamberlain, you duck fucker! <laughs> 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 you're gonna hurt somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Here he comes. Go on, give me the second spot. Not just now, boys. Just... Hi, Freddy. Robert, Mary, I'm sorry. Can I just borrow him for just a moment? You can win, my dear. Why do I get the feeling it's a long-term loan? It's from Rolls-Royce. They're abandoning the RB-106 engine program. We don't have an engine. Critchley was right. Well, don't worry, Freddy. We'll work out something. So it's three against one. I'm at my ceiling, guns are all jammed. Uh, I'm all but out of fuel. So there's no other place to go but down. So I put it into a steep dive, full throttle, and I hope to get away from it too. Except for one little problem, I blacked out. So I wake up at 2,000 feet, still headed for terra firma. I pull her out, engine sputtering, scraping the treetops, and there, right in front of me, is an airfield. Well, I'm sure that wasn't the first time that Lieutenant that you've woken up to find yourself in a dive. <laughs> <laughs> My friends! My friends, we did it! We are about to build this new aircraft, designated the CF-105. We will call it the Avro Arrow. And it will be the most advanced supersonic fighter interceptor in the world. We have been contracted by the Royal Canadian Air Force to put this new design into full production as soon as possible. The Arrow will eventually service 20 squadrons across Canada, numbering 700 aircraft. And Canada is only the beginning. And just today, we have decided to take another big step. We will go beyond the airframe. For today, we have decided to design and build a new engine to power her. An all-Canadian supersonic jet fighter interceptor, airframe and engine. Now, this isn't my plane, and it isn't Avro's plane. This will be your aircraft. From the designer to the riveter to the guy who sweeps the floor, the arrow belongs to you. And to show you that I mean it, I am giving each one of you a bonus of Avro stock. Wait now. Don't cash it in. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. Buy more, and I'll make you rich. Today, we've opened the door to the future. And the future is unlimited. Thank you. So, holding out on me, a new engine program. Whew. So tell me, what are the specs? Is it axial or centrifugal? Well, we've really just... You didn't know about it. You didn't know about the engine? We can handle it. Excuse me. 
Don't put an unproven engine in an unproven aircraft, Crawford. It's the cardinal rule. I like breaking rules. It'll almost double the cost of the program, Crawford. Look, gentlemen, do not worry about this tonight, all right? Tonight, just enjoy yourselves. Ask someone to dance. I'm so proud of you. You big jerk. I have something for you. Gorgeous. What's the matter? What's wrong, girl? I can't wear this in public. Well, then, wear it for me. Here, now. It's okay. Can't stand being this close to you all day. Alone all night. I don't think I can do this anymore. Listen, sweetheart. I've made a decision. I'm going to talk to her about a divorce tomorrow. Tomorrow? I promise. I'll take care of everything. Okay. CBC Television News. In Hungary this week, the deportation to Siberia of resistance leader Major General Paul Malatar led to angry demonstrations against the continuing Soviet occupation. Since the bloody invasion on November 4th, 100,000 Hungarians have fled the country. Immigration officials report that Canada has taken in 8,000 refugees to date. Canada joins with Britain, France, and the United States in condemning the Soviet action and demanding their immediate withdrawal. In national news, the Trans-Canada Pipeline controversy took a new twist. Today, in the House of Commons, after four days of heated debate, Minister C.D. Howe invoked closure on discussion of the subject. The government bill to continue funding the pipeline will be put to a vote tomorrow and is expected to pass. Opposition leader Diefenbaker accused Minister Howe of taking democracy hostage and promised to make this a major issue in the upcoming election. Rolls can't do it, can they? We have a 46-inch hole. You think you can fill it? We need 20,000 pounds thrust. It can't be done. What? Unless. Unless what? Unless you try something radical. Only two spools. Get rid of the center bearings. No center bearings? It's never been tried before. We use only outer bearings. Simplify the engine, reduce weight, increase airflow and thrust. 20,000 pounds? More. How soon can it be finished? It'll be ready when it's ready. You should have come to me in the beginning. Now you've wasted all this time. Without me, 
You airframe boys have got nothing but an oversized paperweight. Then get started. Another hundred million? It'll be the most powerful engine in the world, CD. Every country will want it for their aircraft, military and civilian. You'll get your money back ten times over. What's this about Avro buying Canadian steel improvements? And Canada Car. And a control interest in Dosco. I needed magnesium and titanium. No one else in the world can get us those alloys. We have to do it ourselves. Remember during the war, you hammered it into us. Don't rely on others for the basics. I warned you, this is not the war anymore. I sent you to Avro to supply this government with an aircraft, not build a little empire. Well, this isn't about just one airplane, CD. I'm laying the groundwork here for a huge international aircraft industry. Isn't that what you wanted? Called it three times the original budget. Sometimes I wonder if this whole thing is a big mistake. Now listen to me. After the election, I want results. I want to see this thing in the air. Or we're going to reassess the whole program. You understand? Can I have the engine? All right. Build your engine. But remember, by the end of next year, There's one other thing, Crawford. How's Mary? Mary? Uh, she, she's well. Good, good. It's a fine woman. Did business with her father, you know. It's a good family. Crawford, we're given the gift of privilege. With it comes moral responsibility. Set an example. It's good marriage, keep it. Put your mind on business. Frankly, CD, I don't see where this is any of your concern. It's a weakness, Crawford. You can't afford it. I'm trying to make it as clear as I can. The landing gear will not fit in this wing. It's three inches too long. Can we widen the wing? No. Well, can we shorten the gear? No, no. We need clearance for the belly pod. Uh, sir? You have something to say? Yeah, it's just over here. What's you... your name? Uh, Joe. Joe Pulaski. Hi. Well, Mr. Pulaski, what do you think? Well, I don't know. Uh, couldn't you just bend the wings down? What? What? If you bend the wings down, then the gear doesn't have to be so long, right? That could work. Four degree can't, the wings would give us three and a half inches. Yeah. Let's cant the wings and uh, shorten the gear. That won't affect the flying characteristics. Well done, Pulaski. Ten degrees to starboard, sir. Ten degrees, bank. No, ten degrees, you're yawing. Sir, you're yawing? Good. Trim that up. Watch the airspeed. You're close to stall. So, Mr. Woodman, why are you doing that? Why didn't you run through the automatic ground control interception procedure? Nose up, losing altitude, oh, I haven't sir. got that far in the manual yet. Uh, too much, losing airspeed. Ah. How about the navigational computer? Why don't you run through the data feeding sequence for us? Watch your airspeed. Steady on the bank. Too tight. Too tight, sir, losing airspeed. Uh, I'm just in the middle of that chapter. You are in a spin at 1,500 feet, and... Now you've just made a big hole, sir. Isn't this how we first met? I can't fly like this. I want an airplane. With these controls, I feel like I'm driving a dump truck. What do you need a computer for, anyway? I'll show you. You want to go to Sudbury. You switch to auto, feed in the coordinates, set the throttle and Mach number. You're in Sudbury in nine minutes. 
And when you get there, you better know where you're going next, because while you're making up your mind, you're going to be out over the Arctic Ocean. This isn't going to be like any other fighter plane, Mr. Woodman. This is going to be a rocket ship. You have to be thinking 30 miles ahead of her all the time to stay in control. No seat of the pants prop jock stuff is going to cut it here. You need to know her inside out. Every system, every control mechanism, every nut and bolt. Or else, she's going to fly you. Prime Minister Saint Laurent told reporters today he is confident of another win at the polls based on his government's record of accomplishments. Another outstanding achievement of the 22nd Parliament was to get started the building of the natural gas pipeline which runs eastward from Alberta. This tremendous venture of such significance to so many millions of Canadians was only made possible by patience, persistence and finally successful government action after a debate nearly as long as the pipeline itself and quite as full of another kind of, a, of natural gas. Opposition leader Diefenbaker visiting Winnipeg today continued his attacks on government spending and declared if elected he will quote break up the Bay Street monopolies and give everyone a fair deal. You see? 14,000 pounds at 55 percent throttle. I told you, when we fine-tune the blades, it'll be the most powerful jet engine in the world. It'll put out enough thrust to drive the Queen Mary. We want to use the Indian theme, call it the Iroquois engine. And you say it's practical for other applications? Of course. We'll power almost any aircraft, bombers, passenger craft, even trains. Those airframe boys don't even know if that plane of theirs will fly. This engine is where Avro's future lies. Well, that's one hell of a future there, Critchley. Need that damn engine, Freddy, so keep on top of it. The Americans have the J75 engine, Crocker. Now it doesn't have the power. I don't want an American engine. I promised this country an all Canadian aircraft, and that's what we're going to get. All right. You, uh, all right. Give us your vote. How are you? Excuse me, who are you? John Pallet. I'm the new progressive conservative candidate for this riding. This is the workplace of honest men. It's no place for a conservative politician. Get out. I have the right to campaign here for Mr. Diefenbaker. No one here wants to know what you or that prairie blowhard have to say. Get off my property. Goodbye, Mr. Pallet. Canadians go to the ballot box tomorrow to elect their government. Recent polls indicate that despite their new leader, the Conservatives trail in the popular vote by as much as 20%. It seems likely that Louis Saint Laurent and his Liberal Party will continue to govern. doing here? I was just an old seat of the pants prop jock doing a little homework. What are you doing here so early? I like to come here sometimes early in the morning just before the shift starts and well, just look at her. It's wonderful when beauty and technology can come together. Yeah. What do you think of my navigation system? Well, it's not bad. I do have one big problem, though. With electronic controls, I won't have any sense of feel. What do you mean, feel? Like, when you're in a car, you can feel the road. 
With this, everything is electronic and hydraulic. Well, at Mach 2, you couldn't do it manually. You'd need hundreds of pounds of pressure. Yeah, I know, but with your system, I won't be able to feel the flex and stress in the airframe and the control surfaces. I should be able to feel that through my hands. Well, it's just not that way anymore. When I fly, I'm part of the plane. I want to feel wing load and g-force. I need to feel the level of stress in the airframe or an over-control during a given maneuver, and I could tear a wing off. It's not possible. You just have to figure out a whole new way of flying. You don't need a pilot. You need a computer operator. Feel? What does he want to feel for? He says he wants to feel the forces on the plane. Hand like a foot. Honey, what I was saying was, I'm not just a working stiff no, anymore. No, G-force is wing load. I'm a shareholder in the company I now. I think that makes sense. No, it's completely unnecessary. Spades. I've got all my bonuses in the stock. I'm working for myself now. I may as well throw in our savings in there, too. You know, I suppose you could recreate some of the sense of feel with dampers and weights. Mm, bonuses are one thing, but not our savings. Don't worry. This Gordon guy got some the minus touch. Nope. It's a total waste of time. Hey, in another year, I'll buy you a new house. I might even buy a new car if you treat me right. Whoa. Just play your card, Mr. Rockefeller. Yooker. <laughs> In a startling upset, the Conservative Party will form the next government of Canada under John wow. Baker. Let me say to you this night. God help us, ladies and gentlemen. That is our new Prime Minister. The man's never been east of Saskatoon. The man's never been west of Saskatoon. <laughs> <laughs> mm. There will be a process of equalization of opportunities for all parts of the Oh, You bet. Well, I'm well, lady now. I always knew if I stuck with this pole act long enough, you'd have me farting through silk. <laughs> the final count was Liberals 105 Oops. seats, the Conservatives 112. Seven Liberal cabinet ministers lost their seats, including the man dubbed Minister of Everything, Mr. C.D. Howe. I don't know what to say, C.D. I mean, has this country forgotten all that your government did for them? Are we all accountants in this country? We don't dreams or visions anymore? Not that that damned aircraft of yours was any help. Behind schedule, three times the budget, not a single plane in the air to show for it. You failed me, Crawford. The air will be an amazing achievement, sir. It'll be your legacy to the people of Canada. Let me tell you something. These men who come to power, they have small minds. You will scare them. And they will resent you, and they will strike out to destroy you. I can handle those bastards. Don't you worry, the arrow will pay off. Not for me, it won't. CD. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go home. and play with my grandchildren. All clear. Well, you know, governments come and go, but Avro's here to stay. We're gonna show them just who we are. We've gotta go after these international markets. Now, the Belgians bought a couple of squadrons of 100s. We'll give them a deal on the Arrow. Who's that American, Colonel? Colonel Fairchild, yes, sir. Right, Fairchild. Invite him up here for a visit. We've got to find a buyer for this engine. Try the French and the Italians. We should meet with the new government, see which way the wind blows. Well, I'll tell you how to find that out. Ask them for more money. How close are we to a fully assembled arrow? Four months. Freddy, I want a rollout of a fully assembled arrow in two months. Crawford. I want people to know what we're building here. I want them to see the amazing potential of this country. Get me Air Vice Marshal Curtis, please. Thanks, Dahl. You're welcome. Turn starboard, 30 degrees of bank. Turn port, 40 degrees of bank. 30 degree climb. Good. I'll have a little surprise for you. Turn starboard, 30 degrees of bank at Mach 0.75. Turn port 40 degrees and increase throttle. Do you feel? Yes. I feel the wing load. That's good. Real good. Well, of course, it's just simulated here. It'll be a lot better once you're in the air, but that's the feel you were talking about, right? Yes. You delivered, Mr. Hare. Thank you very much. 
Welcome, Mr. Woodman. We wouldn't want you snapping a wing off now, would we? <laughs> Daisy, has your lunch ready. Come out and get dry. Better go now. I'll take that. Crawford, aren't we waiting until 7 o'clock anymore? Well, I have to be at the plant. Go over some cost reports with Freddy. I'll be late tonight, Mary. I've thought about what you asked, Crawford. I've thought about it a great deal. But I think you know my answer. We'll both have to deal with this situation in our own way. But I warn you, if you leave, Crawford stays with me. A program of structural and systems test was begun at an early stage and carried out with one primary aim in mind. The first aircraft was not to be a handmade prototype. A comprehensive test program to prove all aspects of design was therefore necessary before starting. And they're asking an additional 60 million. Oh. It's an expensive program, there's no doubt about that. No, sir. But it's quite a feat of technology, if it lives up to expectations. Prime Minister. We were elected on our promises of social programs. Raise the old age pension, new unemployment insurance plan. And we still have other hard choices to make. The arrow <laughs> is an example of everything we've campaigned against. The government funding huge liberal programs at runaway costs. The newspapers are saying we're already wasting more money than the liberals. Don't forget the Soviet threat. The Russians can fly over us unopposed and drop nuclear bombs on our cities. We have to defend ourselves. The main problem with Avro is Crawford Gordon. He's got them building a new engine and a new airframe at the same time. It's a, a little like wearing two left shoes. Maybe distinctive, but it's not too bright. There were occasional delays, and sometimes adjustments had to be made to keep the whole project rolling smoothly. Let's give them 45 million. Oh, well, well. But I want to see all the information on the Arrow program from the very beginning. And John? Yes, sir. That's your constituency. Ask some questions. I want you to see what you can find out about their operations. Yes, Prime Minister. It's a pretty thing, isn't it? And make a new contribution. There's a feeling of anticipation here today, ladies and gentlemen, as we await the rollout of the first Arrow. Among the dignitaries are executives of Avro Aircraft, RCAF Air Marshal Wolf Curtis, and the new Conservative Minister of Defense, the Honorable George R. Parks, V.C. Years ago, the great Canadian pioneer, John McCurdy, who is with us on the platform today, flew the Silver Dart, the first aircraft to fly in Canada. History recognizes that event as the beginning of Canada's air age. I am sure that the historian of tomorrow will regard this event today as being equally significant. The future will belong to Canada, but only if the people of Canada have faith in the destiny of Canada and work to make it all come true. You tell them, Will. Give them hell.
I should like once again, in my capacity as defense minister, to commend the efforts of those who have contributed thus far to the development and production of this airplane. Through your efforts, you are making a direct contribution to the defense of the free nations of this world, and so to the well-being of us all. I now have the pleasure of unveiling the Avro Aero, Canada's first supersonic aircraft, a symbol of a new era for Canada in the air. thousand parts, baby. We did it. George, what do you think of my airplane? I think it's nifty. Me too. <laughs> so, do you think Crawford got what he wanted? Oh, I'd say so. I told the press no more than two inch headlines. We have to save something for the first flight. <laughs> Oh, great, thank you. It went well today. Oh, very well. Nothing can stop us now. Well, the engine is still on the test bed. The plane is a long way from first flight. C.D. Howe is not up in Ottawa writing checks anymore, and the Globe says we are Dude, heading for a recession. This is supposed to be a party. Go and raid on somebody else's parade. Hey, look. Look at this. Miles per hour beyond Earth's atmosphere, varying somewhat at different points in the orbit. What? Yes, it has been confirmed. Today, the Soviets have successfully launched Sputnik into orbit around the Earth. The satellite is able to circle the planet in less than one hour. It's currently being tracked by radar stations <coughs> around the world from Alaska to it. Australia. <coughs> the West has lost the race for space. The age of missiles has begun. We have in our studio oh. Professor Harlan Sedgefield, military historian. Tell me, Professor, does this event mean the beginning of 
push-button warfare. If missiles can be used to uh, launch a satellite into space, then this will require the total rethinking of the defense of North America. It's conceivable that such missiles can now be used to strike targets here in North America with atomic bombs. But what are we looking for? Oh, it's a little dot of light. I, the sun will still be reflecting off it, so it'll look like a little star, like a little moving star. There it is. Where? There. About 45 degrees off the cup of the Big Dipper. See it? It's amazing. Oh, yeah. wow. It's really moving. Yeah, 17,900 miles an hour. That's almost limitless velocity. It's, it's wonderful. It'll be over China in half an hour. They put weapons in these things? Weapons? <laughs> Jim, these guys are the enemy. Try to remember that. Mr. Gordon, can you see it? Freddy. Buy some of those damn American engines for the first five arrows, and let's get them in the air. All right, Crawford. This is the Soviet's new Soyuz rocket. Well, what does this new threat mean to us? The Americans want us to buy their Bomark missiles. Should we stay with manned fighter interceptor aircraft or buy those missiles? Or do both? We're still assessing the threat of missile attacks. But we do know that the Russians are building more bombers than ever. And the Americans tell us that their missiles can defend against Soviet missiles or bombers, and that half the cost. The Navy needs a dozen new anti-submarine frigates. The Army needs 200 new American tanks. With respect, sir, we can't trust the defense of North America to missiles. The Bullmarks are still in development. They're completely unproven. So is your airplane. How soon can we start taxi trials? Patience, Flight Lieutenant Woodman, a few days. <sighs> uh, Jan, I'd like you to meet uh, Flight Lieutenant Jack Woodman. Jack, this is uh, Jan Zurakowski. I saw you at Farnborough the first time you did the cartwheel maneuver in the meteor. It's a hell of a show. Thank you, Flight Lieutenant. What brings you to Canada? Uh, Jan is going to test pilot the Arrow for us. Uh, Jan, I'd like you to meet uh, Flight Control Engineer Kate O'Hara. How do you do? I must hear how such an attractive woman becomes a senior engineer. <laughs> Kate, perhaps you could update Jan on the new onboard computers. I want to fly it first. This plane is mine. No, not yet it's not. Look, what this aircraft needs is an international recognition. Now, with Surakowski's reputation, if he endorses it, I can sell this plane around the world. But I know the control procedures, the backup system, every goddamn nut and bolt. So will Zurakowski. Zurakowski's going to go by the book. He's in no hurry. It could take him weeks or months to prove the Arrow's capabilities, and I don't think we've got that long. I could fly it today. Look, I have no doubt that you can fly the aircraft, Woodman. Absolutely no doubt at all. But the fact of the matter is that I need to sell this aircraft outside of Canada. And what it needs is the endorsement of a big-name pilot. So, Zurakowski flies. Did 
you know about this? No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. Well, it stinks. I don't think you should take it too personally. I'm not. off the ground. Avril Towers, Chase Plane 117, entering a left-hand circuit at 1,000 feet, standing by. We'll read your Chase Plane, carry on. Morning. Morning. All right. We know it works on paper. Now we step into the unknown. Arrow 201, this is Tower. Do you read? That's a affirmative, Tower. Positioning itself now down at the end of the run. As pilot Jan Zarakowski runs through his checklist, under the watchful eye of the men and women who built this, the world's most advanced jet fighter interceptor. Uh, Arrow 201, this is Avro Tower. You're cleared for takeoff. Thank you, Tower.
挺多的。With the first five arrows off the assembly line and flying with an almost flawless record of testing, everyone is eagerly anticipating a new generation of arrows with the more powerful Canadian designed and built Iroquois engines. And now Avro Canada has taken over development of the Sparrow II missile and astra guidance system from the U.S. Navy. This weapon system is the most sophisticated in the world and Avro engineers are solving the guidance problems that defeated the U.S. Navy engineers. And Avro Canada isn't stopping there. Down in hangar number four, work is proceeding on a prototype of the Avro car flying saucer for the U.S. Army. Avro is moving ahead on many fronts and confidence in the future is flying high. Smudge it, huh? Ruby! Hey, Ruby! What do you think, hun? Speak as 
a piece of sheet metal I ever saw that doesn't fly. Oh, it flies, baby. It flies real good. You can't afford this, Joe. Betsy was just fine. Did you sell some stocks? Didn't have to. Took out a loan. The bank just loves an employee of Avril Canada. Yes? You guys ready? Merveilleur Francois. 20 mil livres. Minimum. 47 pouces. Oui. Envoyez-moi la lettre d'intention et je donnerai la priorité absolue à la commande. Oui. Bien. Au revoir, Francois. Freddy, I just got a conditional order for 400 Iroquois engines. If we can make 20,000 pounds thrust. The French want it for their Mirage fighter, so keep on Critchley. Now, we need some more press releases. Uh, something big. Need like a major story a week. Are we missing any angles here? Well, it uh, never hurts to play up the Canadian aspect. Zero's been great for the international recognition. But we've got a Canadian plane, a Canadian engine, and I think it's time for a Canadian pilot. Now, I know the Woodman would kill to get up there, and I bet we can get Callwood to do a feature story. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's make Jack happy. smiling about? Gordon changed his mind. I'm going to do the next fight at 201. Congratulations. That's great. Thanks. So, can you put me through some sequences? Sure. Why don't I take you out for a drink after work? Sober it. Great. I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Okay. I'm being restricted to Mach 1.2 in tomorrow's flight? That's right. That's barely cruising speed. You could do Mach 2 without even working up a sweat. I know. Look, we've got to start showing some numbers in this plane. If the Chiefs of Staff don't see performance soon, they're going to bury this program and buy missiles. This aircraft isn't going to do diddly squat until it's got the new engines in her. That could take months. Look, I'm not here to give free promotion to those Pratt & Whitney's. When the arrow beats the world's speed and altitude records, it'll be with the Iroquois turbines and burners. Then I can sell that engine all over the world. We won't give a damn what government's in power. So, until the Iroquois ready, we just take it nice and easy and stick to the schedule. Understand? Bother your kids? <laughs> no, they're Avro kids. They sleep better when the test engines are running. So do I, for that matter. Huh? That's the night shift shutting down. Lights go up, the water pressure goes down. Everybody's showering. <laughs> <laughs> and the traffic jams at shift change, they're just terrible. Nobody minds. This is Malton. It's the hottest little town in Canada right now. All the churches and houses and restaurants going out. All because of Avro. Uh, Jack, there's something I want to ask you about. Um, in terms of testing flight controls, it would be very useful for me to monitor the flight control system from the primary location. That way I can initiate direct analysis right at the source. What are you, what are you saying? You want to go up with me? But all your monitoring equipment's on the ground. That's true, but it's always better to collect data closer to the source. If you want to go up for a ride, why don't you just ask me? I want to go for a ride. <laughs> I think we could work something out. Most people would be afraid. I'm not. You sure? 
I'm sure. You really want to put yourself in my hands? I thought they were supposed to be in the controls. Oh, there's no telling what might happen up there. I'll take my chances. So, I'll ask James to give me clearance for tomorrow's flight. Tomorrow? Why not? I hope this has got nothing to do with the drinks. I thought you were beginning to like me. But Kate, it's my initial flight is going to be dangerous enough without exposing a passenger to it. I'm hardly a passenger. I don't think you should take this personally. I'll take you up another time. If I'm up there, it's going to speed up the testing process. I thought that's what you wanted. I I'm sorry, Kate. I can't take you up this time. I told you I didn't want a passenger. Avra still owns the plane. Crawford gives the orders. I'll refuse to fly with you. Sure, Zura would be happy to go up. Look, Kate, I'm going to push this plane today, see what she can do, and it could be dangerous. But if we don't start putting some big performance numbers up soon, this whole program could be at risk. You've got a job to do, and so do I. Arrow 201, this is Avro Tower. What is your status, please? Avro Tower, we're lit up, ready for takeoff in about 30 seconds. Flight plan calls for a straight route, Toronto to Kingston and return. ETA Toronto, about 18 minutes out of dawn. Ready, Miss O'Hara? Ready, Mr. Woodman. Arrow 201, you're cleared for takeoff. the Hughes weapon system on this rig? No. We're developing the Sparrow II missiles with the Astra guidance system here in Canada. Uh, you're building an airframe, an engine, and a weapon system? That's right, Colonel. What kind of ground control is required? None. You can't expect any ground control over the high Arctic. The computers will make each aircraft totally self-sufficient. They'll find the enemy, lock in, and destroy before he gets over the ice cap. Control's very sensitive, very responsive. Can I switch to auto mode now? Auto mode? We just got up here. Well, let's see if the computer will take us to Kingston. 
I'm switching to auto override. I'm dialing in the Kingston coordinates. Set. Hey, look, Ma. Two o one at Mach point seven, increasing through Mach one. What happened? Gee, uh, I guess the engines quit. What? Kate, we broke the sound barrier. You can't hear them. Oh. Asshole. Okay, here's Kingston. Auto mode's been having all the fun. When's it my turn? Just let me set the Toronto heading. 201, directly over Kingston Beacon, negotiating 180 degrees standard turn, not to exceed 1.5 Gs. Two forty two degrees straight to Mole. Okay, now I'm going to take over. Disengaging auto mode, manual override. So, you ready? Mach two, fifty thousand feet. Do it. Please continue on course. Woodman, this is Gordon. Cut back your throttles. That's enough. Gordon, I can do Mach 2. I can take the world speed and altitude record right here, right now. Let me do it. I said no. If you break the records, those Frenchmen will buy the Pratt & Whitney's. We can kiss that engine contract goodbye. We wait for the Iroquois in 206. We're so damn close! All right, then, if you won't listen to business sense, listen to this. You have a female civilian with you in an unproven aircraft. No one knows what'll happen at Mach 2. It's your responsibility, woman. Quarter throttle. That's one incredible bird, Gordon. Congratulations. Thank you. Put down 25,000 feet, Mach 1.2. Well, we did 40,000 and 1.9. 25,000, 1.2. So. I can't believe the flight's almost over. Well, still got a little fuel left. Avro Tower. Will limit speed and altitude and request permission to extend this leg out over the lake? Engineer O'Hara has requested some tests in the flight control system. Arrow 201, this is Avro Tower. That's an affirmative. Maybe we can have some fun after all. What are you doing? Never been to Buffalo? Where's he gone? Arrow 201, come in, please. Everything's fine here. Just checking FCS response. Let's go wake up the Yanks over at Niagara Air Force Base. <laughs> Captain, look at this. Look at that son of a bitch come at us. What the hell was that?
Speed, altitude, practical design. I think anyone can appreciate the uh, superiority of this Canadian aircraft. I've never seen anything like it. And I recommend strongly we purchase several squadrons with this aircraft when they become ready for service. Look, if we buy a Canadian aircraft for American defense, our own aircraft companies go start raving nuts. And so do the unions. The last thing they want is competition from up north button into their markets. You know, this aero is supposed to be a top secret aircraft, yet the companies really scale model kits. Soviet agents are lining up at the toy stores. Sir, with all due respect, my priority is to provide my men with the best possible aircraft in the world. Why are the Canadians building military aircraft in the first place? I thought they built canoes. You know, they should have bought those surplus Bowmark missiles we were trying to sell them. Whatever happened to that deal? I'm telling you, we'd be fools not to have these aircraft for ourselves. It's not gonna happen, Colonel. There's something I'd like to ask you, sir, on another point of business. When is the CIA gonna share open and frank information on this U-2 spy plane of yours? What spy plane? Look, the sky is my territory. Sooner or later, you're going to have to deal with me. President Eisenhower has assured the United Nations there is no high-altitude American spy plane. I can only hope it's because he doesn't know. Are you going to brief me on the program or not? I can't help you, Colonel. The U-2 program's the real issue here. The best idea we've had since the war. We can practically take pictures of Khrushchev taking a crap. The president stated there is no spy plan. Now, if what that colonel says is true, this air would fly circles around the U-2. Take photographs, make the president a liar. But do you really think the Canadians might blow the whistle on us? Of course. Half the damn country are pinkos. All right. I'll have a word about this with the president. We're still waiting for your aircraft to achieve operational requirements. We have no doubt in the aircraft's abilities. You said that you could fly your aircraft to 75,000 feet. This report says you only made it to 25,000 feet. I don't care what the report says, Minister. I flew the aircraft to 45,000 feet. And you only flew to Mach 1.2. I terminated a climb at Mach 1.9. Minister, this aircraft will fly to 75,000 feet and at Mach 2.5, but the testing will take a little bit more time. We'll hit peak performance with the new engines. They're 28% lighter and 34% more powerful. And when will these new engines be ready? Get in there and find the problem. Are you ready? Can we bring in the press? It won't start. What? The damn engine won't start. Edward, they're out there waiting for you to deliver 20,000 pounds of thrust. I know. Sir. What? Maybe it's the new cowling. It could be reducing airflow to the vents. Look at the bloody cowling off! Mr. Critchley. We're ready here.
told you, didn't I? Get the afterburner. See the real arrow fly. This way, gentlemen. Does the president have his mosquito lotion? It's okay, he borrowed some from the prime minister. Pool up hoppers. Jitterbug. MEP spinners, Canadian wigglers, American jiggers, and flies, oh, furry skirts and flash. My money, John, you can't beat live bait. So it gets the action. I won't argue, Ike. Makes sense to give the fish what he really wants. I don't get much time for this lately. Calms the mind. First time in months I haven't thought about the national debt. Right. Just our luck. <laughs> Be in office during a recession on the Cold War. And that Sputnik didn't help matters. Oh, well, ours will be up there very soon. Price is big, ten times more sophisticated. What goes on in those Russian mines? It's hard to believe they would actually consider an attack. Without sufficient deterrence? I don't doubt it. Their bombers are bad enough, but the guided missiles are the major threat. Have you thought about that defensive missile system we offered you? The Bomark missiles? I'd buy them from you, Ike, but $200 million. That new fighter interceptor jet, the Arrow, has our defense over budget as it is. We could trade you some of those for the missiles. A fighter jet? Oh, nope. We scrapped two of our own fighter programs. We scrapped them? Yep. Obsolete. Futures missiles, John, missiles. More dependable, cheaper, too. Of course, your air chiefs. I don't want to tell you that. I don't want to admit that a cheap missile do the job of manned aircraft. Put them out of a job. Let me tell you this, John. Beware of big business and the military. When they're in bed together, trouble. For the whole country. No one knows that better than this old soldier. You buy them, we'll help you install them up in your uninhabited north. Soviet nuclear bombers will be brought down safely in the high Arctic. If you don't, we'll have to install them ourselves just south of your border. But then those planes would be shot down over our cities. Think about it, John. I'm pretty sure that the missile option would be best for both of See, what did I tell you? Live bait. Well, the missile proposal is uh, perfectly reasonable to me. Uh, what will that mean to our aero program? We can't afford both. <laughs> no, I shouldn't think so. <laughs> On that, I'm in full agreement. And the Americans' other proposal, this joint command idea. No, I don't. Well, we do share a common objective with the Americans, the defense of North America. They're our allies, after all. But our foreign policies have never jibed. <laughs> this is a domestic policy, General. Perhaps, in the interest of national security, any further performance figures on the arrow will not be made public. We'll determine what the Canadian people need to know about its capabilities. Yes, Prime Minister. Prime 
Prime Minister is about to announce that he's joined with Eisenhower to create the North American Air Defense Command, headed by General Seaforth. Seaforth? That means we'll be under American command. How could the Chiefs of Staff agree to that? The chiefs were not consulted. The Prime Minister is acting alone. There's more. The government has ordered a feasibility study into replacing fighter interceptors with unmanned missiles. They're getting ready to shut this program down. So, how close is 206 to flying? Claire! Claire, please come back here. Claire! I think we should consider a third oh, shift. Just, just let me talk to her, please. Well, I'll talk to the unions about reduced overtime. Uh, it, just tell, also, tell her I only need a minute, media right? Campaign to encourage stories in the newspapers. I, I know. And I thought I, I know, a, a but promotional just, film just for a minute, please. Would be effective. Well, for God's sake, don't mention yeah. any more about that flying saucer. I said I know that. There's uh, also a toy God manufacturer damn it. that <sighs> wants to uh, put out another Aero model kit. Good. <clears throat> We need good workers like you. How about you, sir? Hi, I'm from North American Aviation. What's going on here? Uh, this, uh, this joker here is from North American Aircraft. He's offering us jobs in the States. How'd you get in here? What makes you think any of us would want to work for you, huh? We're building the most advanced aircraft in the world here. Yeah, but for how long? That's enough. That's Relax. enough. Hey, hey easy. Easy. That's Relax. enough. Relax. Escort this man off the property. Get lost. Get lost. The rest of you people go back to work. Oh, yes, I, I know, I know. <laughs> the company claims that the arrow testing is going very well. But has anyone been allowed to confirm this? Are you saying the company is lying about the arrow's performance? Well, uh, no, no, this is off the record. There's been a secret report. The Arrow is not turning out to be the aircraft that we'd hoped it would be. It's unstable at high speeds, 25,000 foot ceiling, fuel boiling in the wings. And the price per plane has skyrocketed to 12 million. <laughs> I'm afraid, uh, as pretty as it is, we've got ourselves a lemon. I want to know what is going on. Okay. Well, first, the Arrow is a liberal program. Conservatives would love to see it fail. Then there are the Americans. They'll have a hand in this somewhere. Their aviation industry would never let them buy Arrows. So, if they can't have it, we can't have it either. Then there's Crawford Gordon. He's got enemies everywhere. They're all in control now. Plenty of long knives, and Gordon's their target. But what about the people? I mean, don't they understand what's going on? You have to write stories that let the public know what we're doing. The Arrow is a wonderful success. In this country, that's the problem, Kate. It's too much of a success. Well, this is a lie. Can't you dispute it? Well, give me something. Ah, oh, all right. The... They're basing their $12 million figure on the entire program if we build 30 aircraft. If we build 100 as planned, the cost goes down to $4 million each. I mean, that's less than the F-104. Well, no one reads rebuttals. Look, right now, the Arrow being terrific is a non-story. Newspapers aren't interested in it. The Arrow is a lemon, now that's a fresh story. That's what sells newspapers these days. Even if we wanted to print a pro-Arrow story, the government has stopped us from printing performance numbers. For security reasons. Well, what about a story about the workers and their families? The men on the line? I mean, you've done stuff like that before. What about the people who have devoted their lives to this company? They'll call it soft, but I can try. Thank you. What about when 206 flies and breaks every record? You gonna print that? 
When you break all the records, I'll get it published, one way or another. Crawford, this is your new secretary, Gloria Collinson. Oh, hi, Freddie. I, sorry, I, uh... Uh, that'll be fine for now, Miss Collinson. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Oh, Mary and I had a little tiff. I gotta find a hotel room. Anyone call for me? No. Crawford, listen. Cabinet is organizing a smear campaign against us. They're trying to shut us down. Ah, uh, yes, I need a long-distance operator. <clears throat> Crawford, we need your help. Ah, uh, sure, I'll be right with you. We'll, we'll, we'll fix it up. I just, uh, I, I just need a minute here, Freddie. Operator, yes, I uh, need to call uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, please. <clears throat> this engine doesn't fit. Well, you'll have to redesign it. Redesign it, but we did it according to your specs. The specs have changed. I had to modify the vents. Why did you modify the vents? So I could move the fuel feed aft. Well, why did you move the fuel feed aft? So it would fit the Mirage. What? What? Gordon has sold the engine to the French. Now they'll fit. French? The hell with the French? Look, all you have to do for it to fit the arrow is redesign the intake. But this is our engine. It's not your engine. It's my engine. Now, you better face it. It's your airframe that's getting the bad press. My engine has a better chance of surviving than your airframe, so you can damn well adapt for me. Never. Jim. Jim, I know it's a pain in the ass. I would like to strangle Christy myself, but we do not have time for this. You can modify the intake in no time. Can't you just be reasonable and have a conversation with him? Talk to him, Jim! Where's Crawford? Halifax. What? Halifax. He's trying to get Claire to come back. He's lying. We are canceling the development of the Astra and Sparrow II armament system, the cost of which has also been escalating. We will be making a final decision regarding the Arrow program shortly after our reassessment is complete in April. We have until April. We don't have a weapons system. Maybe I could talk to Colonel Fairchild. Maybe through NORAD, he could give us a discount on an American arms package. It's done? Not by a long shot. We're going to fight this thing. No, I'm... I mean, the plane is done. What? 206. I just finished it. It's ready for taxi trials. Fight what thing? <laughs> I think it's time we went on the offensive. <laughs> right. I'm telling you, I have flown this aircraft and it will meet all expectations. This secret cabinet report is all lies. Well, the real question remains, do we need fighter interceptors anymore, or are they simply obsolete as compared with missiles? Man fighters will remain an essential part of our defense system. But why? Gentlemen, thank you very much for seeing us. Uh, is the Prime Minister coming? No, I'm afraid he had a previous commitment. I see. Well, we have uh, a new proposal for you for the Aero program. The United States Air Force has offered to pay the total price to arm 
each arrow we produce under the NORAD agreement. Now that is $500,000 off the price of each aircraft. So therefore, if you will authorize the completion of 100 aircraft, Avro can guarantee a unit price of $3.5 million each, including fire control and armament, fully operational. It's all right there, fully guaranteed. We, uh, we think it's very reasonable. Well, do you? Well, that, well that's most interesting. Uh, well, carry on, uh, Mr. Smiley, carry on. Uh, thank you. Uh, certainly much cheaper than the inferior American planes. And of course, 60% of all the money that is spent in Canada is reclaimed by the government in taxes. So you see, it makes all sorts of sense to, uh, to. Uh... Are you actually thinking, sir, of replacing fighters with missiles for the primary defense of Canada? Why not? The best defense system must bring a man into battle to analyze and act. A missile can't tell the difference between a Soviet bomber and a TCA passenger plane that's gone off course. You can't call a missile back. Do you want that responsibility? Well, surely there are safeguards uh, against that sort of thing. Missiles will take two years to install and test. And the Soviet bombers are ready to strike now. We cannot defend our country, our continent, with a handful of untested missiles and our old CF-100s. We know, Lieutenant Woodman. But we've considered all that. All that will be taken care of. You see, for a transitional phase, the Americans have offered to defend Canadian soil. The Americans are going to defend us? Are we going to have a country here, sir, or give up and just be the 49th state? If not the uh, 100 aircraft, I suppose we could simply finish the 37 that are currently on the assembly line. It would be much cheaper for the government to finish these aircraft and put them into service than to pay the contract termination penalties to Avril. Now this would allow us to keep our design team together to look for other projects. And by the time that those 37 fly, I'm sure there'll be plenty of other opportunities to... Uh, to... Uh, gentlemen, we have created the finest aircraft team in the world. We have done what they said was impossible. The files, they're full of applications from the best engineers at, at Boeing, Lockheed, Douglas, Gloucesters. And they would all feel privileged to work with Avro. Having the arrow means that Canada is being recognized as a power among the nations of the world. We have a contract for 400 Iroquois engines with France. We, we have the development of, of civilian aircraft, uh, nuclear power, a monorail train that will circle the city of Toronto. We are... Uh, currently developing a flying saucer for the, the U.S. Army. Uh, with this amazing team, I think it would be crazy for you, you know, to... No, Mr. Smy, we asked you some time ago to consider less uh, highly technical work that Avro might do if the Arrow was no longer in production, such as perhaps the manufacturing of uh, products uh, more practical to Canada's needs, as in, uh, well, let's say, uh, Aluminum boats, or uh, home appliances, uh, even cookware. Cookware. Cookware.
Crawford? I had to look all over for you. I've got something to show you. You know, I can understand you wanting to get away from people. I like to do that, too. Now, here is the Mark III, high altitude. It'll get us beyond 100,000 feet. We can have one in the air next year. Look, here's how, what happens. I fly up to the stratosphere. That's the edge of space. Then we flip her over. Then we open the belly pod. And here we have the missile. And we just launch it right into space. Right into orbit. At that kind of an altitude, we don't need those big rockets that the Americans and the Russians have. Just little ones. We can do the same thing with a manned capsule. We could have a man in orbit the end of next year. But the best thing, the very best thing, is we can use the arrow as a platform and we can launch a vehicle to the moon. We can do it, Crawford. We can go to the moon. Yeah, see, I was having a problem with the rocket propellant and the uh, trajectories for the, the lunar orbit and uh, some other things and so on and so forth. But uh, I figured all that out and we can do it now. So, um, when can we start? Go to the moon? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I still some work to do on the landing craft and um, <clears throat> the pr primary rocket. Immediately. I'll inform Ottawa right away. Well, start with something modest. Like 100 million. Don't you remember what you said? Anything we can dream, we can do. You said that. And uh, this is only the beginning. And <laughs> you said that too. This is um, this is only the beginning. Only the beginning. Well, well, I better go. I'm, I guess I better get going. Uh, you rest up and come back soon. We need you. Bye, Carl. Good to see you. Good day to you. Great to see you again, sir. Tell the boys in assembly. I don't know why. There's everybody on the show. Good morning, Kate. Crawford, we were just discussing Cabinet's decision to go ahead with the Beaumont missile purchase. Yes, but remember, Freddie, governments come and go. Avro is here to stay. I said the future is unlimited. We're not going to let some gang in Ottawa destroy what we created. Now, <coughs> all right, there's a lot to do. What is the status on number 206? Well, we should be able to get her in the air in a couple of days. Good. You and Jim make sure that happens. Kate, I, I want you to go and see your friend June and coordinate a formal press campaign based upon the records that number 206 is about to break. Freddie, we need to organize a team to put together a new documentary about the development of the Arrow with uh, all the advanced technology stuff. Models, first flight, chase plane footage, uh, interviews, speculations on the future. I, uh, I want it to air on CBC two Sundays from now. As soon as you organize that documentary team, pack your bag and come with me. What a Crawford. Where are we going? Somebody's got to take on that son of a bitch in Ottawa, and I'm just the one to do it.
How much longer will his lordship be? Prime Minister is on the telephone with the President of the United States. Oh, well, we wouldn't want to disturb them, would we? Now remember, Crawford, all the performance reports that James prepared is in the file I gave you. And we have matched every operational requirement so far. Also, there's the financial reports. We're a little bit over budget, but not much compared to the Brits Hunter or the Yanks F-104. Crawford, you need to give him the employment numbers. Tell him about the 654 subcontracting companies. Tell him about the international patents that'll bring in millions. Yeah. Point out to him that 60% of all funds that are spent in this country are returned to the government in taxes. Talk about the passenger aircraft, the commuter transit to monorail system, the uh, space program. It's all in the file. Don't worry. We'll have a good little chat. Now, where's the file I gave you? Oh, damn. I must have left it on the train. What? Uh. Prime Minister, I'll see you now. Crawford, listen to me, please. He doesn't like smoking or drinking or profanity. Don't worry, Freddy, we're gonna straighten this whole goddamn thing out. You cannot shut down the goddamn third largest employer in Canada. I will not let you. The Avro Arrow has become a multi-million dollar make-work project. You really don't understand, do you? You know, it's politicians like you who would keep this country from greatness. If you have no respect for me, have respect for my office. I am the Prime Minister of Canada. And I demand that you personally guarantee that the Arrow program will not be cancelled. If you don't lower your voice and stop pounding my desk, I'll call security and have you thrown out. You've been spreading lies about my airplane. Well, I will tell you this, that when the all-Canadian arrow flies and breaks all the world records, you and your cronies will be exposed for just who you are, a bunch of fools and liars. Get out! Bye, Mr. Gordon. Attention. If I may have your attention, please. 
Prime Minister stood in the House of Commons this morning and announced that the Arrow and Iroquois programs have been terminated. This cancellation has been confirmed by the Department of Defense Production. And we have no further details until Ottawa gets in touch with us. We ask that you remain calm and continue your work. And later today, you will be informed as to our future. Thank you. Thank you. So they want to fight, do they? Well, so be it. I'll fire everybody. We'll see what Diefenbaker says to that. Robert, that's 14,000 people, 35,000 in the support companies. You just can't fire 50,000 people in a day. Don't you see, Freddy? The fool will be forced to reinstate the program. We can find other projects, other contracts. What the hell is going on? They gave us till April. They changed their minds. Let me take a tour, six. Just let me try around. I'll take the damn thing out over the lake and ditch it so they don't impound it. No. You just cool down, Jack. Let's find out exactly what this means before we do anything crazy. May I have your attention, please? Federal government has instructed us to cease all work on the programs. There was no advance notice. Therefore, the company has no choice but to terminate the employment of all Avro and Iroquois workers until we assess the impact of the Prime Minister's orders. Everyone must now leave the plant. Come, come on, put it back. Put it back. North American Aviation. We got a job for you in California. How about you, sir? Hi, I'm from North American Aviation. We've got jobs for Boys, let me offer you a card. Boeing aircraft make the finest planes in America. We need some workers for our city. traitor. Screw you. I'm going to California. You're a quitter. That's all you are. You're just a quitter and a traitor. That's it. A quitter and a traitor. That's all you're ever going to be. They did what? We'll offer to buy any that are operational. To hell with orders. I thought the press was on our side. He's firing thousands. I don't think we have a choice, Mr. Prime Minister. For now, we'll have to reinstate the program. He's told me this was what the public wanted, to cut liberal programs and balance the budget. Well, it's too late now. We can't show weakness. We have made a decision, and we can't go back. The workers are all my constituents. They'll throw me out of office. Don't worry, John. We'll always make a place for you in the party. Prime Minister, the United States Air Force wants to buy all completed aircraft with parts. American General Electric has made the same offer, as has the British government. They want them? But the President told me manned aircraft were obsolete. 
The French government wants to know if they can still expect delivery of 400 Iroquois engines next year for use in their new Mirage fighters. If other countries buy it, we'll look like fools. So what do we tell them? No. No to all of them. Not one arrow or engine will leave Canadian soil. The program is terminated. I want you to get rid of everything. Planes, engines, parts, blueprints, patents, photos, films, everything. Get rid of them. Surely you can. Them all. You yes, can. I can. You're forgetting yourself, John. I want to be rid of these infernal airplanes. The sooner this is done, the sooner everyone will forget about them. You can't just shut down an industry like a workhouse. History will prove this to be one of the most colossal blunders made by a prime minister in the history of Canada. I am speaking for my brother machinists when I accuse the prime minister of economic treason, political servitude, and moral prostitution. Department of National Defense order, sir. Destruct and dispose. Sorry, sir. Wait! The fuel and oxygen system is charged up from yesterday. He's gonna blow himself up. Can't get those guys off the plane. It's gonna blow. You'll need a crew to empty the tank. Shut it off! Get away from the plane! It's just restricted airspace, you know. I could lose my life. Come on, right over top! Taking up 206 like I wanted to. I was gonna ditch it in the lake. I can't believe 206 is gone. But it's still there. They fired everybody, so they didn't have a, a crew to empty the tanks. I guess I'll chop it up tomorrow. You mean it's uh, still intact? As far as I know. And uh, it, it's outside, fueled up. Yeah.
Hey, Kate. What's this all about? Thanks for coming. Lofsky? Can you pressurize 206? You bet I can. I want to come with you. Are you sure? I've never actually... I've never actually gone right up in it. I've never actually... What? I've never flown before. What? You've never flown, ever? No. Coast is clear. That's it. We are done. This is all yours, sir. Jim, you go on up. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck, Flight Lieutenant Woodman. Thank you, Engineer O'Hara. What the hell do you think you're doing? I thought you'd try something like this. Don't you know that stealing a top security aircraft can get to 20 years? Yes, sir. However, if your mind's made up. I beg your pardon, sir? Your instructions, once you're airborne. Now, what did the secret cabinet report say? Ceiling of 25,000 feet? 
I don't think so. Lost our air, but check one world record. Space. That's right, Jim. We're touching it. Destination for us, Jim. We'll just say goodbye.